What's good, guys? Today is Wednesday, December the 28th, 2022. This video will be regarding the Shanquilla Robinson case. And specifically, um, for those of you who are unaware, the investigative reporter Gerardo Zuniga, who works for Metropolimex in the state of Baja, California, Sur, had his first YouTube live last night. And besides the fact that People were extremely rude, um, disrespectful, impatient, and just downright ugly. Um, he did not have a moderator and may not know even how that works. Um, he had a translator. And at the beginning, he showed his accolades uh, because a lot of people have discredited him. And so he's trying to show you guys that look, uh, I have, um, you know, won awards for my journalism. Now, he specifically said that there were a lot of rumors and a lot of gossip going around in this case, and specifically mentioned YouTube channels. Now, I thought he was going to specifically name YouTube channels, uh, because he definitely had some in mind. Um, but he didn't. And he said that rumors and fake news is a real problem in this case. Well, that's a problem in a lot of cases. And I will say most cases. Um, but because he hasn't done YouTube, that may not be something he's aware of either. But he said the American media is struggling because the FBI is so private on their investigation in this case. And that the information is so protected that it complicates everything. Well, the FBI is usually private. And I don't know how many cases he has covered um, in the United States. Uh, so I don't know if he's aware of that either. But it's two different worlds between Mexico and the United States. He did say that there is um, information that only the Mexican authorities has. We don't have that information. Um, he said that um, his intention with this YouTube live video last night was to introduce these five photographs that he himself took. And he estimated the time of these pictures to be when the doctor first showed up at Villa Linda 32, which he said was 3 o'clock p.m., okay? He did take questions at the end, and someone asked if there were security cameras located inside of Villa Linda 32. He said no, that, but there were some on the outside. People were specifically asking about the housekeeper, Lucy, and where she found Shanquella. And he said that she found her in the living room, which would, if we believe what Nazir Wiggins said, line up with what he said, because... He said that they moved her from the game room to the living room uh, when they started talking about eating. Um, where a lot of people, well, a lot of people were asking about Asian A. Jackson. And he said he was not going to discuss her because he had an entire dedicated program to show regarding her. And someone asked about the photograph of her being detained. And he said he would not be able to provide such a photograph um, of her being detained until a January time frame. Now, he didn't clarify whether she had been detained or whether that would be when she would be detained. So he didn't clear any of that up. But um, whether you choose to believe him or not, that's entirely up to you. But I still wanted to bring it to the channel to make you aware of what he said. And I will link his live in the description box, okay? Now, um, and I want people to understand a few things. A crime scene in Mexico and a crime scene here are two entirely different beasts, okay? 
And I want to give you an example of that. Now, this article came out in June of this year from CNN titled, It's Never Been More Dangerous to Be a Journalist in Mexico. On down in the article, it says, The state of Baja, California, where Tijuana is located, is also notorious for disappearances. If the past is any indication, many of those people will not be found and are likely dead. Crime reporters, like the one they were speaking about named Aguilar, are sure to always be busy, but there are also an extreme risk of becoming a victim of the same crimes they are covering. This year, 11 journalists in Mexico have been killed, according to the Human Rights Group, Article 19. Freelance crime journalist Arturo Rosales, who agreed to let CNN accompany him on one of his overnight shifts last week, is aware of that reality every night. They met at an empty park near the city's infamous red light district, where he pulled up in a taxi that he owns. He said in his downtime, he gives people rides, but that doesn't pay much. His job depends entirely on what he hears on a tiny radio he keeps propped on the car's console, and it's tuned to the police and first responders' frequencies. They're with him, CNN's with him, for about five minutes before a call comes in about a body found in a truck near a highway. At the homicide scene, they are greeted by two police officers. They are holding the area until crime scene investigators arrive. There are so many killings each day in Tijuana that it often takes hours for technicians to even show up. Rosales greets one of the officers. What happened? The driver was shot in his car, the officer said, adding, Stay behind this line, but photograph whatever you want. Rosales snaps photos and goes live on Facebook, sticking clearly to only the most basic facts, the location, time, and manner of death. A lot of critics say the Mexican government is either unwilling or unable to protect these journalists, much like it is seemingly incapable of curbing the vast levels of violence across society as a whole. CNN accompanies him to several other murder scenes that evening in some of Tijuana's most dangerous neighborhoods. At each one, police presence is limited, with some people standing around and watching. They are likely spotters, called punteros, who work for certain cartels and watch what happens at the crime scenes. Now, I bring you that specifically for two reasons. To show you that it is dangerous to be a journalist in Mexico, specifically in Baja, California, sir. And also to show you that these scenes are very different, handled very different than we handle them in the United States. And also, you have to take into consideration that we don't know whether or not they were considering this a crime scene, even. Um, remember the whole uh, complex ordeal of the death certificate versus this report that the doctor had? And we don't know how they treated that crime scene. So, um, I don't think it would be strange for Gerardo Zuniga to be inside that villa. Uh, honestly, because I don't think they had a clue what was going on uh, in the beginning. But um, please go check out his video, um, just at least for your own good. Make your own decision about whether or not you believe him. Um, I believe everybody should go and at least listen to it. And then you decide whether or not you believe him. Don't listen to someone else and don't let someone else tell you whether or not to believe him. Um, but I simply wanted to bring it to the channel, um, just to have it and, um, to cover every aspect of this case that, that we can. Because now I will point out a few things about the photographs, um, that do match up or line up with the photographs that were taken of Villa Linda the advertisement photographs. And again, we don't know if these photos were snapped 10 years ago. We don't know. But the cobblestone on the outside matches the cobblestone that Gerardo Zuniga is walking around on um, in his photograph. Um, the entryway, we see it from the other side 
uh, but it's very elaborate. Um, that lines up. The uniform that the doctor has on in the photograph coincides with the uniform that the American Medical Center doctors wear. There is recessed shelves uh, inside of that living room in Villa Linda 32. And that adds up. Uh, it lines up with the photographs or advertisements for Villa Linda 32. It doesn't mean the decor is the same um, as far as the vase or what have you. But the couch and the table are the same. The chair is the same. Um, so I definitely wanted to point out the similarities uh, between his photographs and the advertisement photographs on the Cobble Villas website. And people were frustrated because he put his watermark on the photographs. Well, I don't blame him. Uh, I would put my watermark on there as well. Uh, because people never give you credit for work that you do. So again, simply wanted to bring this to the channel. Uh, with the link for his live from last night. Um, because we don't have a whole lot to go on in this case. And so if these photographs do check out to be legit and the real deal, we'll have them. Um, but I am going to end the video on that note. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Let's keep pushing for justice for Shanquella. Have a great night.